What's going on guys, this is Damien from The Lookout and it is time, oh man, the best part of a spoiler season. We saw all cards from the BT25 set and it's time to make an archetype tier list before the ban list hits and we do our meta tier list. So guys, I hope that you are hyped, but let me just let you know that if you wish to play any of these archetypes, you can do so on our locals every Friday at 8 p.m. Central European time. Free entry, proxy legal, open to all regions. If you wish to play, just grab a webcam, grab a deck and come and have fun. And of course, a huge shout out to the Coffee Club, our level patrons. These are our $2 and up patrons, the bias coffee. They keep this crazy content grind going and guys, thanks a lot for your support. If you wish to join the Coffee Club, link to our Patreon is in the description below. And I think that's about everything. Roll the video! Okay, it's time for the tier list. This is this is my favorite part of new sets. Tier lists. I love them so much. I only waited for the campaign rares to come out to make sure that nothing here affects how any of these decks are played and then we can make a tier list, right? But before we begin, I need to address something. Uh, so, ban list. Uh, we're doing this tier list before the ban list is announced because it could be like two weeks. After the ban list comes out, we'll do the entire metagame prediction. But so far, I don't believe that there is anything that could be taken off or put on the ban list that's going to drastically affect the tiers of any of these decks. Like, I don't think that's possible. Uh, I will talk, I know what you're thinking, I will talk about it. So, let's go over the tiers. Tier 0 OP should be banned, nothing goes here. Tier 1 meta defining, the best decks in the upcoming meta. Uh, tier 2 competitive, the second best decks. These will be topping like crazy, they just won't be as represented as the meta decks. And they can't compete with them with like above average consistent results. Uh, tier 3 rogue decks, you know them, they just show up here and there, they top from time to time, but they're more of a surprise factor the deck. Uh, tier 4 locals, so please, if a deck is locals, it does not necessarily mean that it's bad, like a lot of most fun decks in the game are from the locals tier, like it's ju it just means that you can't really take these decks and then just hope to top a big regional event. And then we have Trash, pretty self-explanatory, and then we have tier 6, the Toba token tier. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with the first one, which is going to be none other than Dark Brawly. So let me just load up a picture or uh, an image of Dark Brawly here for you so that it's easier to follow. Uh, one second, where is it? Here it is. Okay, Dark Brawly. Um, this deck is the best deck in the set. It's by far the best deck in the set. Uh, it creates an exceptionally huge board, like really, really a stupid board. Uh, it play. It has a lot of replays. All of them are 30k, which is insane. Yeah, they don't have skills, but they're 30k beaters. Uh, he can draw on both turns. Uh, he can minus something by 15k whenever a 30k battle card is played. Not limit one. Not once per turn. Not only on your turn. If you play two 30k bodies somehow on your opponent's turn, you just minus 30 something. Yeah, this one is really, really scary. If you play yellow with him, which is the best way to play him, uh, you just have extra draw power. You can run this one with unisons, you can run this one uh, without yellow and run, in, and run the SS4 Vegito Xeno SCR. You can uh, run with yellow and then run the Fist of Fate SCR. Uh, there's a billion ways to build this one. Now we need to talk about its weaknesses, right? In a red mirror matchup, 
uh, he's weak to violent rays. Explosive dents will not necessarily stop this thing, but violent rays will stop it. It will shut it down completely. Um, the other thing is Bulma Bunny Girl probably, maybe, ending up on the ban list. Uh, will that be enough to actually kick this deck a tier below? I don't think so. I think Bunny Girl is okay, but it's not such an extremely crucial crucial card that will just make this deck bad. Like, I don't think that would happen. So, uh, other than that, uh, you have the Baby Ape in yellow, which can cause you some issues. Uh, you have your usual floodgates uh, dormant uh, nimbus uh, the one that charges the uh, amazing rage uh, everything else you know all of the floodgates but we can't really we can't measure this deck based on like your opponent has floodgates in that case every deck sucks and even if your opponent floodgates you'd say like okay i've played nimbus you can attack only once more it's like okay i'm swinging with a 30k guy and I might just give it crit. So, uh, anyways, this deck is absurd. The draw power is stupid. The amount of bodies that you can get out is stupid. Like, the, this is Dark Brawly power crept. So, uh, it's not tier 0. But it is tier 1. It's definitely the best deck in the entire set. Then we reach something that isn't the best deck in the entire set. And that is Gotenks. Okay, so about Gotenks, guys. Um, I think this one is slightly overlooked. I don't think... Let me know in the comments how many of you have actually played Gotenks. How many of you have actually tried the deck out? Or have you just read the cards and said, like, oh, well, it's shit. It's not bad. Like, it has a lot of free play. Uh, it can go aggro with ghost tokens. That's one of the things that I'm looking to test now. It can go aggro with ghost tokens and the new TP. Uh, because, worst case, for free you get two 15k attackers. You get two additional attacks. It has neat combat tricks. It can play mid-range. Um, it has free play for Z extras. It draws a whole bunch. Uh, the unison is kind of whatever. So overall, the deck does a lot of things. Now the problem is that uh, you have a very, very cluttered Z deck with this one. So you need to pick and choose which Z extras you're actually using. If you're not running a lot of Z extras, a lot of archetype Z extras, you're kind of missing out on your leader's ability. Cool thing about the ability, you can play multiple Z extras in the same turn. It's not once per turn, it's not limited to one. Uh, the Gotenks cards themselves are okay. Like, they're not... Uh, they're not super broken. They're not super weak. They're just kind of okay. They're fine. Um, the TP that we still need to see... Uh, gives all of your ghost tokens blocker and draws two so your ghost tokens are now 15k revenge blockers because they will restand at the end of the turn so that's something i believe that's gonna be the way to go with gold things i believe that trying to push for low to the ground aggro by just recycling the same just replaying the same z extra over and over and just like spamming the spamming the field is gonna be pretty neat but i don't think that that's gonna push the deck out of local steer i think it's okay i think it's very very fun i don't think that it is rogue though uh how to make it rogue basically the only thing that you need for this deck to be even more powerful uh, we would need a counter or something that care a card that cares about the amount of cards in the battle area in blue or uh, the amount of extra cards that would help because that would really help you leverage the amount of blue cards that you're playing until that happens i think the deck is very strong but i think that i think that it's local steer 
I think a lot of people might say that it's trash. It's not. It's locals. I would not argue that it's rogue. I would love to put it in rogue. But I can't really see it, to be completely honest with you. I can't really see that. So, um, then we have Bojack. So, yeah, let's talk about Bojack. Bojack does a lot. Okay, um, you draw a lot. You, you draw more than the majority of decks in the game. You draw 6 to 7 cards per turn. You draw 9 cards when you awaken. Uh, all of your big guys are 8 costs, which means they're perfect successor targets for Gogeta SRs. Uh, you can run Celzino, which also flies perfectly in the deck because you have 4 costs and 8 costs. Uh, you can become huge on your turn. You can become big on your opponent's turn. You have enough of space in the deck to run green good stuff in him yeah the only problem is that he doesn't he's not a saiyan so he can't run an easing he has to run dormant instead now if by some miracle dormant doesn't get hit on the ban list uh, it's gonna be fine if dormant gets hit i think you will just run majin bupo instead the boonie gate and then people will remember, wait a second, nobody actually sides hate for Floodgate battle cards anymore. It, it's not complete shit to run them. And then it's gonna be fine. I think a lot of people are still thinking, hey, if I run a Floodgate battle card, it will get counterplay. No, it won't. Have you seen the sideboards? No one runs Floodgate battle card hate anymore. Except for Black. Because Black needs something to fill the deck space. So... You can just run it like that. Uh, other than that, uh, I think the deck is phenomenal. I think this deck is one of the better decks that we have had in a long time. This is what? Third set in a row. I believe this is the third set in a row or fourth that Green got like a meta, uh, a meta leader. Well, Trunks Mai isn't meta, but you got like you got Gohan, Trunks Mai, which is rogue competitive, however you wish to build it. Uh, you get future Goku, and now you have Bojack. Like Green is Green is really on a rampage. So uh, Bojack goes to tier one. Bojack is tier one. I I, I don't think that. Bojack is any less than that. This deck is absurd. This deck is so strong. It, it, it draws so much. Any deck, any green deck, which can draw 6 to 7 cards per turn and can play all of the green good stuff except the say unlocked ones, it's a good deck. Any green deck which can do that is a good deck. And Bojack just happens to be able to go super easily into the new Gogeta SR. Uh, it can go easily into Celzino. So, yeah, pretty sure that Bojack is tier 1. But now let's talk about Majin Buu. Okay. On paper, Majin Buu looks amazing. Uh, he draws a lot. Like, Majin Buu really, really draws a lot. If Turn 2, if you play the one which draws you a card when you attack, and then you awaken and then you attack, and then you draw three cards, your hand is going to be pretty big. Your hand is definitely going to be pretty big when you play Majin Buu. Uh, all of the four costs are okay. Not a single one of them is bad. Not even the one which creates tokens is bad. It just creates additional combo power. That's cool. And then you just use them and pay two and go into SS3 Gotenks. So it's not bad. The deck is really, really cool. Um, when it comes to downsides the z leaders are complete bait like the z leaders are an absolute bait you're going to run maybe two of the kid boo maybe uh, you're definitely gonna run at least one and then you're gonna run like maybe one other and that's probably gonna be the one that restands an energy you're not running a single one of the other z leaders they're all bad so uh, Boo is uh, the Kid Boo is amazing because it cheats in bodies, and not a single one of these Boos has uh, his unique. That's a big thing that you need to keep in mind. 
not a single one of them has unique. So you can play multiple SRs and stuff like that. Um, there is the board clearable, which is phenomenal. The problem with it, again, one last thing to note, uh, there is the SCR, which is pretty good. The SCR is pretty good. The problem that I have with the deck, and I have been doing some testing with it, it runs out of gas. Like, it can, it starts with a very, very big hand. And because the leader really shines on only once per turn effect, and because you need to run a bunch of generic blue things, because the archetype is really small, if you don't run over your opponent very quickly, it will run out of gas. And I still haven't had a game in which this deck hasn't ran out of gas without being able to kill the opponent. So that's my big, big issue with Blue Bull. I think that he doesn't have what it takes to be competitive. Um, compare him to Red Goku, to Dark Broly, right? Or compare him to Bojack. Both of these decks, well, Dark Brawl is better, right? Uh, is, is a better comparison. Both of these decks draw a ton. They put out a lot of bodies. Both Goku and Boo just swarm the field. They get a lot of value. But Goku just kind of keeps drawing. And a lot of the cards in the deck have synergy with literally everything else. Well, Boo kind of falls off. Unless he beats you very quickly... He just falls off. Nothing here has... Nothing has keywords. They have some skills which are pretty cool. But it still kind of feels lacking. Even the SR gets double strike, which is amazing. But then you have to be a Z leader, which isn't the best. So it's kind of... Yeah. I've played a couple of games with this one. I have tested him. I don't think that I don't think that he's as good as he reads on paper. I think that he's good, but not as good. So I would say that he's definitely a tier above locals, but I don't think he's competitive. I think he's like rogue. At best, I think this deck is a rogue deck. Uh, I think he, when it comes to blue aggro, he gets completely a chow I would shine by Gohan, and I think that he just struggles to get there like he has amazing first three turns four turns and then it just kind of stops if you haven't killed your opponent he just kind of stops and the deck has a very hard time recovering especially because you just don't draw on your opponent's turn so rogue it is i think it's fair to say that this deck is rogue uh then we have Midjita, that's my name for it. It's Midjita. This deck is painfully mid. So I know there was a lot of hype around this one. I was hyped for it. I love this for Gogeta. And I was like, this is insane. And when you read it, the leader, he's insane. When you look at the boss monster, the boss monster is like SCR level of power. That one is completely busted. And you're like, it's SS4 Gogeta. It can't be bad. He has access to all colors. He has a way to draw when you actually get rid of the cards and stuff. With uh, Alliance, with, with Aegis, with Revive. He has ways of getting you stuff. But he kind of doesn't do anything. And that's the weirdest part. It's a deck with energy exhaust, with a, a with not with energy exhaust. It's a deck without energy exhaust. It's a deck which negates damage with the Z extra. It's a deck which has access to every keyword on the planet, and everything is an eight drop, and it has the one of the best boss monsters ever made, and he's just kind of mad. He doesn't do anything. The problem is. He struggles to kill you. He just doesn't really have big threats. Except the SR. Um, his hand size is awful. He play Gogeta. Your hand size is just bad when you play him. 
Uh, if you run the entire archetype, you'll just break. You, you will break entirely. Um, so you have to narrow it down. Right. Okay, now listen to me. This is going to be a bit of a longer argument because I know that some people really, really have high hopes for this one. You have to narrow him down, right? So, stick to two colors. Maybe three. And let's try to stick to one or two keywords. If you go with successor, there is only one target. And that is the eight cost and that's it. You, can, you don't even need to go. You'll get successor passively. So don't build it green, uh, green, yellow. Uh, Alliance, green, red is like the worst one, and you don't really have a lot of alliance payoffs in the deck, so that one is gone. Uh, there is the Goku that's never gonna survive, never really gonna hit the field and kill someone. Uh, Aegis is the best one. So revive is just bad. There is almost nothing here. Aegis is the best one. I think all of us can agree on that. But Aegis Gogeta is infinitely better than this one. So like Aegis Gogeta is better than yellow blue Aegis focused SS4 Gogeta. So where are you then? If you do the entire archetype, you do you don't do anything. Like, the deck doesn't draw, it doesn't have big threats, it just kind of tries to do everything and nothing at the same time, and when he tries to specialize into something, other decks do that better. Like, yeah. Um, he has access to Offering, Beedrus does that better. Uh, red, green is cool, but then you have Broly Surge. So, each and every one successor... You can play with cells, you can do some other shenanigans, there are ways to make successor decks. It's just kind of the point, is that Gogeta doesn't do anything spectacular, it struggles to maintain hand size, it struggles to kill you, and every other deck, which you can think of, for one of these mechanics, does it better than Gogeta does. So this deck is just kind of meh. Like, it's, it's, it's really meh. One good thing that it has is that it will have access to black with the Shenron promo. And that's going to give it Bardock the Tenacious, which is cool. But he kind of already has access to Nimbus. So, yeah, I guess. I mean, Bardock the Tenacious is cool. But maybe, maybe go with Cumbers or some barrier removal or just charge multiple of the yellow-black Shenrons. There, there is something. But the point is, the thing that I've been dancing around is this deck isn't good. It, it's terribly mid. It's locals. It's not even rogue tier. Like, this deck is just bad. So, uh, you know when I said... Hey, if it's local tier doesn't mean that it's bad. I think this one is local tier and it's just bad. But we'll see. I might be wrong. Uh, then we have uh, actual garbage. So King Piccolo. Okay, now let me address the elephant in the room, which is the ban list. Um, first off, in the form in which this deck exists today, this is probably one of the worst decks that we have ever had. Like the, this deck is awful. Like the, there is no jumping around it. Everything in the in BT25 is better. A lot of things from other sets are better than whatever this was. Now, let's address the ban list. There is an argument, and there are reasons to believe, that some things will come off the ban list. Uh, particularly, the Piccolo Jr. Uh, SR the Unison, which is okay. I still think that, I mean, sure, I think Gogeta is a lot better, but you can play Pickle Jr. in this deck. Uh, and possibly, possibly, Drum and maybe Piano will go back to four. Here's what's gonna happen. If this happens, if this happens, and Drum goes to four, and uh, Piccolo Jr., let's say Unison returns, but Piano stays banned. 
whether or not piano stays, ban stays banned, uh, the idea is you will just run BT12 Piccolo. Like, if anything goes off the ban list for the old Red King Piccolo, you will just run that one. Because that one is infinitely better than whatever this is. So, that's my take on, hey, wait for the ban list and let's see what happens. If things that you want to come off the ban list come off, the other King Piccolo will see play. Not this one. Because this one is horrible. So, uh... This one, famously, goes into Tova Token Tier. Not even things going off the ban list can save this one. Then we have uh, the Bad Shadow Dragon, so Nuova. Uh, let's pretend, we have to pretend, that uh, the deck functions as he should. That the Dragon Ball interaction has been errated and that the deck actually works. Um... He's not that good, honestly. Like, the thing that kills him is that he plays he plays four costs, which is great, but he plays them with skills negated. And that's the worst part. Uh, if you wish to play a control Shadow Dragon, Sin is infinitely better. Sin is absurdly good when it comes to control. If you wish to play more aggressive, you want to play some of these aid to drops and stuff, Oceanus is infinitely better than Uova is. So even... In a world where Nuova works properly, the skills negated part makes it so significantly worse than Oceanus or Sin that there's just kind of not really a reason to bother with it. Like, you can play Nuova if this is one of your favorite characters. More power to you. Absolutely. I always vouch for people playing decks that they like or their favorite characters and stuff. I have a concerning amount of decks. And maybe 2% of them are meta decks. So I, I just play random shit. And I like playing stuff like that. So I understand when people like playing cool characters or cool interactions or funny decks. I get it. So if that's what you want to do with Nuova, more power to you. But the deck is really bad. Like, the, the deck is really, really bad. Compared to the other Shadow Dragons, he's the worst one. Now, is he bad enough to be called trash? I don't think so. Honestly, I don't think... This deck doesn't really have anything going for it. It wants to play the big uh, the 4 costs and the big 8 costs. Uh, there is a deck which does that better. So, Nova doesn't... Do that Nuova is not unique in that aspect. Uh, he has a cool field, uh, not field, the Z extra card. He has like these cute interactions where he gets the Dragon Balls uh, when things are removed and stuff. I mean, it's more what the 8 costs do, but there's just kind of nothing here. There's just kind of nothing here. Like, he cannot, the best thing that he can do is that he cannot take three times with the SR, with the 8 cost SR, but that's just kind of it. So uh, this one is, he's not trash, he's very close. He's in locals. Uh, speaking of Shadow Dragons, let's talk about the better one. Oceanus. Oceanus is insane. Like, Oceanus is everything Nuova wants to be, but better. Because Oceanus does one cool thing, that Nova doesn't. For one energy, plays the four cost in active mode. I mean, no, just plays it, yeah, I believe in active, um, without skills negated. And that's the big thing. Like, that's the that, that makes an entire world of difference that they don't have skills negated, these four costs. Because that allows you to go insane with the old Nova promo and then just free play a 30k 8 cost uh, ice Shenron and then just evolve on top of the 4 cost and get a billion attackers and then go into Gogeta SR. Plus there is a loop with Oceanus card, uh, the uh, anniversary box one and the old one. There are a couple of infinite loops that you can do, like a couple of combo interactions. At least, I think, two lines at least 
like two big combo lines at least with uh, the four cost promo and uh, the Oceanus line and I think there is also one with two of us but I'm not sure anyways this deck does uh, this deck does a lot draws a lot plays a bunch of attackers plays a bunch of shit for free uh, has easy access into Gogeta SR uh, is yellow shadow dragon with the Z unison and everything else cool that shadow dragons get and it's crazy it also has a battle trick where it gives itself plus 10k for the battle which is great and it puts things into the warp which you want to do uh, it draws a bunch it has multiple combo lines like this deck is uh, my point is that this deck is tier 1 if uh, if it weren't for U7, I think U7 will still see play. But if you even if U7 doesn't get hit on the ban list, this is still gonna be the second best yellow deck in the game. Like this deck is absurdly strong. And finally, let's uh, get to trunks. Okay, so I I didn't do this on purpose. Just kind of left it as the last one. Just randomly threw cards out there. So, uh, Trunks, I saw that this one caused a bit of divide, the people aren't sure what to think of this one, uh, he has a cool thing, he has a couple of cool things, first a card gets stuck in, gets stuck in the combo area uh, due to the Z extra, which means that you're getting its combo power for all attacks in the turn, so let's say your opponent attacks you, you combo one of the five drops, it gets stuck in the combo area, and now everything has plus 5k. And you immediately have one portion of your arrival online. That's awesome. Uh, it can play Scramble for four energy, SS3 Scramble, uh, due to its activate battle effect, and that's pay four to deal to one interruptible damage. Like, damage is interruptible in insanely niche cases. In really, really niche cases, it's interruptible. Otherwise, it's just let out pay 4 to deal 2 damage. There is no world in which pay 4 to deal 2 damage is bad. Like, that, that's insane. Um, it has access to decisions made on turn 1. Now, I've heard a bunch of... Uh, I would frankly say a, a bit crazy opinions that this isn't good. Like, oh, it's not spicy, it's just decisions made. Like, shit. It's access to charismatic villain from the start of the game. Four copies. That you pay one energy for it, it's not really a charismatic villain, but it is pretty close. So, uh, having access to decisions made, phenomenal. It has some spice which we will see if it shows up on regionals or not um it's it's a relatively okay arrival deck it draws a decent amount of cards it's a green saiyan so it can run an easing um overall over uh it can run fear it can run a field card but i don't think you really do that so you just run decisions made and you run an easing in dormant. You don't run King Cold in this one. But due to how much you draw, due to how much burn you can technically have, due to the big combo power that you have, uh, and just the idea of being a Green Saiyan, I think this deck is really, really strong. I think this deck is really, really strong. Now, he's not tier 1. He's not. Uh, every single one of these tier 1 decks is better. Uh, Trunks is one of those which looks very, very, very bad on paper until you start playing it. So I think he's definitely not tier 1, but he's also not tier 3. I think this one is has very good competitive potential. I think this one is tier 2. So, uh, yeah, there we have it. We, from this set, we have 3 tier 1 decks, which is great. We have one tier two, one tier three, a bunch of locals decks, and uh, an honorary entry into the Toba token tier. So yeah, guys, that's the tier list. That's it for the video. Let me know in the comments below what is your Masters BT25 tier list. 
which archetypes do you think are amazing which archetypes do you think are shit what do you think i got wrong and what do you think i got right let me know in the comments i read all of your comments i try to respond to everything i love our little community and guys while you're here share the video hit those like and subscribe buttons help us get to 6k subs when i'm gonna give away a booster box this has been damien from the lookout and i'll see all of you in the next video